21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Who's shooting? A cop is shooting or a cop is shot? Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? 75 or 79? Wait a minute now, not so fast. You're in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. I'll send the officers right over there. No, you just stay there. Show them where it is, yeah. Right away. They'll be there right away. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my day tour, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. As customary, I arrived at the station house around 7.30, and after signing the blotter, went into my office and changed to uniform. Meanwhile, the 65 men who would work the 8 to 4 were coming into the station house, walking through the muster room, and downstairs to the basement lockers. They changed to uniform and reported to the back room. At five minutes to eight, the patrol sergeant began forming them into ranks for inspection preparatory to marching out into the muster room for the turnout. Meanwhile, at the desk, Lieutenant Gorman, who would be desk officer during the day tour, and Sergeant Waters, who would be on telephone switchboard duty, had already relieved their opposite numbers. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Waters. When was this, during the night? Well, who do you represent? The woman that was hit? Yeah. Yeah, but you can't see the report here anyway. You'll have to make application to the Bureau of Information. Room 116, Police Headquarters, 240 Center Street. During regular office hours, any day except Sunday. Yes, sir. You're welcome. That's the kind of lawyer I want if I ever get in the jam, Lieutenant. Yeah? Lady was hit by a bus at 2.30 this morning, and a lawyer's on a job before breakfast. Probably wants a settlement before lunch. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, I understand we've got a rookie reporting for this tour. So I hear. Have you seen him? Not yet. Better hurry up or he'll be late the first day on the job. He won't be late. I had a good one last night. Yes, sir, so I heard. Uh, whose shot was it that hit him? I don't know yet. I haven't dug the slug out. How is the boy? Lieutenant Snyder told me he checked the hospital right before I relieved him. It's not in too good shape, not too bad. No, uh... Here comes your rookie, Lieutenant. Yeah. Probationary patrolman Cochran transferred from the police academy reporting for duty, sir. All right. You go on back to the 124 room. The clerical man will tell you what squad you're assigned to. Yes, sir. His name is Patrolman Fallon. Yes, sir. All right, Sergeant. You let the captain know they're ready to turn out? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, is this the 124 room? What? Is this the 124 room? Yeah, this is it. Um, uh, Alan? What can I do for you? Probationary patrolman Cochran transferred from the police academy reporting for duty. Oh, yeah. Papers came up yesterday. Yeah, here they are. Sit down, Cochran. Yes, sir. There's a couple of blank spaces on the UF-10 that's in up here. You speak any foreign languages? Well, uh, some Spanish. I had it my last three years in high school. Hmm. Shows you're in the Army. Uh, what's the postal zone of your home address? Well, there's no postal zone system used in Far Rockaway. All right. I've got to give you a summons book. Now, wait till I get the numbers off of it. Yes, sir. Now, look, you don't have to serve me. Save it for the brass. Yes, sir. All right, take the book. <clears throat> you're assigned to squad number 10. That's working the 8 to 4 now. You're lucky you can get right on the job. Let's go. Let's turn shut. That's them turning out, isn't it? Yeah, that's them. Well, uh, shouldn't I turn out with them? No, the captain will want to talk with you. Oh. Go to work fast enough. <clears throat> Come on. I'll take you downstairs to lockers. Yeah. Through here. Lockers are down. 
downstairs. Are there many new men getting assigned to this precinct? Oh, you're the only one out of this class. Oh? You got five or six out of the last bunch. Oh. Now, yeah, go ahead. You can have number 47 over here. Okay. If you want a lock, it, bring a lock from home. If you keep a revolver in the locker, you're required to have it locked. That looks pretty clean. Yeah. The washroom and showers are through there. The beds are through there. Okay. I suggest that you come in when you're off duty and leave a uniform and a change of civilian clothes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I intend to. I thought it best to report in uniform this morning. I didn't know whether you'd have a locker for me. I heard down at the academy that they were short on lockers in some of the precincts. Oh, we got plenty. We'd better get out of here. The men coming off the job will be streaming in soon. Okay. Go ahead. How long have you gotten the job, Colin? Uh, Fourteen years. Wow, that's a nice long time. <laughs> I got a nice long time ahead of me, too. You'll like it here. Got a fine bunch of men and a good skipper. Yeah, so I heard. All right, take it easy. They're still turning out. All right, Sergeant. Point to platoon. Platoon at sand, ship. Platoon, right face. Oh, it's my. I'll take you into the captain's office. Okay. He likes to say something to all the new men. Sounds tough sometimes. And he is tough, but... Right, and what you do, he'll stand behind you. Well, that's good to hear. What's my job going to be, do you know? Well, I'll check with the desk officer while you're in with the captain. Okay. Go on, follow him right into the office. Captain. Yes, come in, fella. Go ahead, Cochran. Yeah. Captain Canelli, probationary patrolman Paul Cochran, assigned to the precinct this morning. All right, fella, close the door. Yes, sir, Captain. Well, I'm glad to have you on the job, Cochran. Thank you, sir. The policy in this command is the same as it is throughout the department. We want to keep the goodwill and the confidence of the people by fostering an attitude of courtesy and service with whomever we come in contact. You've got to remember that to most people, the individual policeman is a representative of the entire department, a representative of the city. Your demeanor and deportment in dealing with the public will create either favorable or unfavorable impressions of yourself, the department, and the city. Yes, sir. The people naturally look to their police force for security in their person, their homes, and their property. We want the people to look for that protection and at the same time respect a cop, not fear him. You'll get that respect through the use of courtesy, patience, and tact. Yes, sir. Now, you're new on the job. You've just been through an intensive course of training at the police academy. Apply what you learn there, and at the same time, try to learn more from the experienced men around here. You want to get ahead in this job, you'll never stop learning. You got your assignment? Well, uh, no, sir, not yet, but I'm in a squad that's working this tour. All right, report to the desk officer. Yes, sir. And, uh, good luck. Thank you, Captain. Uh, leave the door open, Cochran. Yes, sir. Uh, the captain instructed me to report to you, Lieutenant. Oh, yeah. Cochran, isn't it? No, he... Yes, sir, that's right. C-O-C-H-R-A-N. I'm going to give you a fixer today, Cochran. Yes, sir. There's a prisoner over in a New York hospital. His name is John Wygand. Yes, sir. I want you to go over and relieve Patrolman Nelson, who's on guard duty there. Yes, sir. Are you familiar with the manual in connection with guarding a prisoner confined to hospital? Yes, sir. All right. Just follow the book and you'll be all right. Yes, sir. Now, look, I don't think this prisoner is in any condition to attempt escape. But I just want you to understand what kind of man he is. He was shot last night on Lexington Avenue by a police officer who jumped him in the course of an attempted robbery of a liquor store. He shot back at the police officer. Then he made an escape, jumped in a taxi cab, and passed out cold. Cab driver took him to New York Hospital, which was the nearest. To be moved to Bellevue Prison Ward as soon as possible. But he's in no condition now. So, you just watch your step over there. Yes, sir. I'll send a man over to relieve you for a meal about 12.30. Yes, sir. All right, get on the job. 21st Precinct, uh, Sergeant Waters. Just uh, one question, Lieutenant. Yeah? All right, 32. Um, where is New York Hospital? 69th Street, New York Avenue. Yes, sir. Get on the job. Right away, Lieutenant. Sergeant? Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Put out a call for Sergeant Tina. Yes, sir. 
Tell him I detailed that new rookie Cochran over to New York Hospital for guard duty. Tell him when he rides by there to stop up and see how he's doing. How does he look, Lieutenant? Think he'll make a good cop? We'll have to wait and see. If we can find New York Hospital, he's got a chance. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Have you ever sat in a club listening to someone hold the center of attention? No doubt you've said to yourself, how does he do it? He's no smarter than I am. And you may be right. But he does have the power to command your attention. And this power may come from a thorough knowledge of the subject in discussion. This power through knowledge is available to you. The United States Armed Forces Institute provides opportunities for military personnel to continue their education while on active duty with the armed forces. USAFI courses are almost limitless. Why, there are over 200 courses in high school, college, and technical subjects alone. For a small initial fee, you may enroll in your first USAFI course. From then on, you can continue to take other USAFI courses at no further cost, as long as your progress is satisfactory. Take advantage of this opportunity. Develop your own power through knowledge with a USAFI course. The next time there's a big discussion at the club, you may hold the center of attention. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. During the course of the morning, I went about my duties as commanding officer of the precinct. I interviewed a retired detective of the department, now employed as an investigator for an insurance company, to obtain a verification of statements on his application for a pistol license. Then I went on patrol in the precinct in sector car number one. By the time I returned to the station house, the newest member of my command, probationary patrolman Paul Cochran, was well established in his first assignment, guarding the wounded prisoner, John Wigan, who had undergone surgery not ten hours before and was sleeping fitfully. As he sat on a chair inside the hospital room, patrolman Cochran looked through the open door down the long hall and saw a nurse approaching. Officer? Yes? Yes, ma'am. There's someone out at the floor desk to see him. Oh, well, nobody can see him. This is an FBI man. I don't care who it is. Well, I told him you couldn't have any visitors, but he said he's got to see him anyway. Well, did he just tell you he was an FBI man? Or did he show you his credentials? Oh, he showed me his card, all right. It, it said Federal Bureau of Investigation. It had J. Edgar Hoover's signature down at the bottom. It was official. Well, all right. Tell him to come back here and I'll talk to him. Yes, I wish you would. I don't know how to talk to an FBI man. Well, tell him to come back here. Yes, I will. So what's the matter? What's going on? Uh, you just better put your head back on the pillow there, mister. What is it? What did she want? Oh, oh boy, I feel lousy. Well, that doesn't surprise me. What time is it, anyway? Well, about 11.30. I feel terrible. Officer? What does well, what does she want now? Well, now? Just put your head back there. Well, I got a right to know. Oh, this is him. Hello, hi. My name is Martin Holtz, H O U L T S. I'm a special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, if you need me. Uh, nurse. Yes. What is it? Could you just step inside the room for a minute while I talk to Mr. Holtz? Oh, sure, I guess so. I can see the bed from here, so don't worry. I'm not worried. I don't think he's going to get up and walk away. Not for quite a while. Yeah. Now, uh, let me see those credentials again, would you, Mr. Holtz? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm Patrolman Paul Cochran. I'm glad to know you. This is a good arrest here. This fellow's wanted in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Delaware. You know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, they got seven or eight cases of robbery against him down there. It's a good collar, all right. Well, I didn't make it. I'm just here on guard duty. I know. We've got fugitive warrants on him. Oh, is that so? I'd like to talk to him a while, if you don't mind. Um, I don't think that'd be possible, sir. Well, he looks all right. I see he's talking to the nurse. Yeah, I know. He was talking to me, too. Well, why can't I talk to him? You just can't, that's all. Do you have specific instructions not to let a federal officer talk to this prisoner? No, sir. Well, uh, I don't like to get insistent, but that's what I came up here for. I can't help what you came up here for, sir. I can't let you talk to him. Look, we're both trying to do a job. Yeah, that's right. You've got your job, and I got my job. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. It doesn't make any difference how I feel about it. That's just the way it is. 
You say your name is Paul Cochran? Yes, sir. Let me write down your shield number. Uh, 24310. All right. Thank you. There's nothing to thank me for. I know there is. Oh, boy. Now, is that better? Yeah, that's better. That's a lot better, thanks. You're welcome. Well, where is he? Huh? Oh, he went. I thought he wanted to talk to him. To me? Who, who, who wanted to talk to me? He didn't have authorization. You should have let him in. An FBI man. An FBI man? I didn't know I had federal trouble. Well, relax, mister. Maybe we both got it. When I had returned to the station house, I found a delegation of mothers waiting for me. A committee of the Parents Association of PS70. They desired to have an additional intersection on First Avenue designated as a school crossing. I agreed with their contention that the intersection was dangerous and promised to investigate the possibility of posting a patrolman at the crossing. After I walked with the committee to the front door of the station house, I went around the desk to see Lieutenant Gorman. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Waters. Yes, sir, Captain. You know that intersection those mothers are complaining about, Red? Yes, sir. All right, you go to me. Uh, send a patrol sergeant around there this afternoon between three and four, and tomorrow morning between eight and nine. All yes, sir. Right. Okay. Have him give me a report on conditions at the intersection. Traffic's pretty heavy. Yes, sir. I know the traffic's pretty heavy. I want to see whether we should make that a school crossing or not. Yes, sir. Farland's got the paychecks, Captain. Oh, good. He says we'll check them against the payroll and have them ready for distribution by the 4 o'clock turnout. And, uh, remind me to make an announcement about getting house tax paid up. Yes, sir. Captain? Yes, Sergeant? Lieutenant King is on a phone from upstairs. He wants to talk to you. All right, I'll take it right here. Okay, Red? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Captain. 21st Precinct, Captain Kennelly. Lieutenant King, Captain. Yes, Matt. You busy right now? No. I have an FBI agent. Detective squad, Captain. Wonder if we can come downstairs and see you. Right now? Yes, sir, right away. Well, all right. Come on down, Matt. I'll be here. Yes, sir. I'll be in my office, Red. Yes, sir. Oh, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, I got something I think you'd be glad to hear. Yes, what's that? My boy's decided he'd like to get on the cops. Oh? Yes, sir, he made up his mind. He's 20 now. It'll be 21 in November. <clears throat> What he's going to do is finish out this year at college. Then in the fall, enroll in Delahanty's. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good, Sergeant. I don't know whether I'm pleased about it or not. When it's some other job, he's sure to do better than money. Well, I can't argue with you there. But tell him I wish him a lot of luck. Yes, sir. Oh, and there's Lieutenant King. I'm glad to see him. I'll be in my office. Yes, sir, Captain. Oh, Matt. Hello, Captain. Special Agent Martin Holtz of the FBI. Mr. Holtz? How do you do, Captain? Uh, do you want to go inside? Thank you. Ah. Have a chair. Anyone all right? Yes, yeah, sure. Anyone at all. Now, oh, what can I do for you, Matt? Well, Captain, Mr. Holtz tells me he had quite an experience. Oh? That's right. You know that prisoner we've got over in New York Hospital, John Wagon? Yes. Mr. Holt says the patrolman on the job guarding over there refused to permit him to have an interview with the prisoner. Is that so? That's right, Captain. I went there and identified myself. The officer refused to let me talk to him. I told him we had federal fugitive warrants out on the man. Well, uh, why didn't you come to the station house first, Mr. Holt? Well, I'm a law enforcement officer, and I thought I'd like to save a little time. I know he's your prisoner. All I wanted to do was talk to him. I see. Uh, Captain, since I came to the station house, I learned that it's that officer's first day on the job. No, I wouldn't want to get him in any trouble. I didn't realize that when I was there. I might have handled it differently. Differently? In what respect? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I might have taken the fact that he didn't know his way around into consideration. Oh, I'm not sure. It's a question of whether he knows his way around or not, Mr. Holmes. Uh, did you see what the book has to say on this, man? No, sir. Well, uh, let me see... There's a whole subsection on it. It's Article 24, I think, Captain. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Article 24. Interview with and visits to prisoners. Paragraph 29. Who may interview a prisoner in a hospital? 
A member of the force assigned to guard prisoners confined in a hospital shall not permit anyone to personally interview a prisoner except those listed below. Well, let's see who's listed below. A, a superior officer of this department. B, a member of the detective division. And C, district attorney or his representative. D, chief medical examiner or his representative. E, attaches of the hospital. F, clergymen in discharge of their duties. G, parole officers. H, probation officers. I, social workers and welfare officers. J, lunacy commission appointed by a court. Well, so far, nothing about the FBI. No, sir. K, a member of the United States Secret Service, when the prisoner is charged with violation of Section 37, United States Criminal Code, counterfeiting. L, recipient of a telegram signed by superintendent of hospital notifying him that prisoner is seriously ill. M, prisoner's legal representative, when that representative, is so on, so on, so on, so on. N, a member of the prisoner's immediate family, if such person has written authorization from the commanding officer of the precinct in which the arrest is recorded. That's all. Doesn't uh, say anything about the FBI, Mr. Holmes. Doesn't it? Well, you want to look for yourself? No, no, that's all right. Well, can you give me authorization to interview the prisoner, Captain? No, sir. You heard what's in the manual. Well, can't I get authorization from the Department of Correction? This is still a police case, Mr. Holtz. The suspect hasn't been arraigned in court yet. He won't be turned over to the Department of Correction until he is. And in view of his condition, I don't know when we can arraign him. Well, how can I interview him? Well, either the captain or I are authorized to interview him. If either one of us go over there and you happen to accompany us, I suppose that'll be all right. Do you think, Captain? Yes, I think so, Matt. I certainly appreciate it. Be glad to accommodate you, Mr. Holtz. Fellow Cochran sure knows the book, doesn't he? For a probationary patrolman. Mr. Holtz, he spent six months at Delahanty Institute and three months at the police academy learning it. If he doesn't know the book now, he never will. Lieutenant King said that he intended to go to the hospital to interview the suspect. He invited Mr. Martin Holtz, the special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, to accompany him. I told the lieutenant that I would like to go along and suggested they wait five minutes until I called Inspector McBride at division to report verbally, as he had requested, on a patrol condition about which he had received a complaint. Lieutenant King and Mr. Holtz went out into the muster room to wait while I made the call. Meanwhile, probationary patrolman Cochran was still on duty at New York Hospital guarding the prisoner, John Wigan. He sat in a chair a few feet from the bed. The prisoner had been lying on his side facing the other way. He turned slowly to face the officer. Say, Admiral. Yeah? Listen. What? I got a cigarette. Yeah, but I don't know whether you're supposed to smoke. Why not? Well, you had surgery and an anesthetic. Oh, yeah. I'll check with the nurse next time she comes around. Okay. (laughs) You must be feeling better. I feel lousy. But a cigarette might make me feel better. Listen, was an FBI around to see me? Or was I dreaming? I wish you were dreaming. Well, what happened to him? Where'd he go? Beats me. Officer? Yeah? Can I see you a minute? Okay. Ask the nurse about the cigarette, huh? Okay, I will. Yes, ma'am? They'll be around to serve lunch soon. Oh? I think you could eat his. He won't want anything. Oh, thanks, but somebody's supposed to come over here around 12.30 to relieve me while I go out for a meal. Oh, I didn't know. Thanks a lot anyway. That's all right. Uh, well. Uh. Yes? He asked if he could have a cigarette. I uh, told him I'd ask you. Well, the doctor didn't leave any instructions. Oh. If the doctor calls, I'll ask him. All right, good. Did you hear anything more from the FBI, man? Nope. No. Well, that's good. If you change your mind about the lunch, just just let me know. I will, thanks. So, what did she say? Hmm? About what? About the cigarette. Oh, she said she'd have to check with the doctor. Oh, for crying out loud, it's only a cigarette. Listen, you better lie back there and keep still. Hey, I don't know. What's the matter with a smoke? 
officer? Yes. Miss Bascoff. Who? The FBI man is coming down the hall with your boss, I think. Uh-oh. Can you see out down the hall? Yes. Is the man he's with in uniform with Captain's bars? Yes. That's my boss. And uh, there's another man in street clothes. Probably the commissioner. Is this where John Wagon is? That's right, yes. Uh, hello, Captain. Cochran? Well, I'll, uh, I'll check with the doctor. What did she check with the doctor about? Well, he wanted to know if he could smoke a cigarette. Oh. Oh, this is Lieutenant King, Cochran, in command of the 21st Squad. Lieutenant? Good. No, you, Cochran. And, uh, you've met Special Agent Holtz. Yes, sir. Yes, we've met. How's John doing, Cochran? Still pretty weak, I think, Lieutenant. Mm-hmm. Wants to smoke? I guess he can talk, huh? Yes, sir. I guess so. All right, Mr. Holtz. See what he has to say. Okay. Well, how do you feel, John? Uh, Cochran. Yes, sir, Captain. I'd like to talk to you out here a minute. Yes, sir. What prompted you to refuse permission to a representative of the federal government to interrogate the prisoner? Well, Captain, according to the manual of procedure, the only representative of the federal government authorized to interview a hospital prisoner before arraignment is an agent of the United States Secret Service when the prisoner is charged with counterfeit. Yes, I, I know what's in the book, Conklin. Yes, sir. And you were right. Perfectly right. Yes, sir. But I want you to remember one thing. The book is fine. There's a good common sense reason for everything in there. But there'll be occasions in this job when you won't have time to refer to the book. Yes, sir. That'll show what kind of a cop you are when you're out there on your own. Twenty-first Precinct, Sergeant Waters. Wait a minute, just a second. Burglars where? Yeah. 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 Well, what is that, an apartment house? Oh. Oh, yeah. Did you see them? What? Yeah. And so it goes. All right. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Elaine Rost, Harold Stone, Bill Redfield, Bill Sterling, Santos Ortega, and Mason Adams. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced by John Ives. Art Hanna speaking.